This video presents the final report for Rogue Squadron composed of group members Nader Abdullahi, Tanner Fasvantis, Zandi Rizzo, and Keenan Witzkin. This video will begin with an overview of the design project, move to planning report conclusions, provide a detailed description of the final design and three concept alternatives, followed by outlining the concept evaluation process, present the competition results, and end with concluding remarks. The objective of the design project is to design and build a machine which will outperform opponents and win the competition. In order to do so, this machine must earn as many points as possible in each round of the competition while defending against other machines. Each round, four machines begin in the starting boxes indicated by the red dotted rectangles. Each machine is tasked with removing two Kong toys and retrieving up to eight ping pong balls located on the border of the zone. Additionally, this machine is tasked with launching a golf ball, placing colored balls in the rotating centerpiece, and egressing from the restricted area. Point awards for all tasks are shown in the scoring breakdown table shown here. Using various planning tools, it was determined that the machine's design should focus on maximizing points earned in each round to defeat opposing machines. Additionally, the machine must also meet all explicit requirements for the competition to avoid disqualification. In preliminary competitions, it was determined that many teams' attempts to retrieve ping pong balls were unsuccessful and often actually knocked these balls into opponent's zones. The function tree depicted here deconstructs the tasks that the machine focuses on, removing Kong toys, launching the golf ball, and placing colored balls in the rotating centerpiece. A house of quality was developed to analyze the relationships between customer and engineering requirements. The criteria which are required for competition qualification are given a high rating for customer priority, and the engineering requirements which are strongly related to these criteria earn a high relative importance, such as reach, which earns the highest relative importance of 18%. The final machine which was selected and then produced employs the most effective design concepts identified using a concept evaluation matrix, which will be detailed later. This machine, called the R2D2, has three subsystem goals. Remove Kong toys, launch golf ball, and place colored balls in rotating centerpiece. Upon successful completion of all mechanisms, the R2-D2 was projected to earn 94 points. To remove Kong toys, the R2-D2 has two hinged flattening arms which are triggered by pneumatic actuators connected to a pneumatic tank. These arms were predicted to successfully remove both Kong toys and earn 0 points. The R2-D2 uses a tape measure to launch the golf ball. The ball is placed in the golf ball base which is attached to the tape. This tape is in contact with a large DC motor and a 3D printed motor pulley. The motor pulley is wrapped in rubber bands which apply a friction force to the tape, and when the motor spins, the motor pulley unwinds the tape which raises the golf ball. Independent preliminary testing found the maximum height for the golf ball to be 86 inches above the arena base. This was achieved with running the large DC motor for 16 and a half seconds. This mechanism was projected to earn at least positive 10 points for being above 21 inches, and then depending on an opponent's machine's performance, potentially an additional positive 30 points for elevating the golf ball to highest. To reach the rotating centerpiece, the R2-D2 has an inclined tube attached to a rotating axle which is rotated from the small DC motor and a second 3D printed motor pulley. A long arm switch and large solenoid were located on the end of the inclined tube to correlate colored ball placement with centerpiece rotation. The long arm switch was activated by making contact with the walls dividing the quadrants to the centerpiece. This triggered the large solenoid to activate for a tenth of a second, releasing a colored ball before the weighted stopper falls back into place from gravity. Three concept alternatives named the Ewok, Wampa, and Jawa were developed in conjunction with the initial designs for the R2-D2 to identify the best mechanisms to make into a prototype. These alternatives were developed prior to the qualifying round where it was identified that attempting to retrieve ping pong balls was actually detrimental to machine performance. Each of the alternative designs focused their me mechanisms on launching the golf ball, removing the Kong toys, and retrieving ping pong balls. The Ewok launches the golf ball using a pulley system which is powered by a DC motor. To remove the Kong toys and retrieve ping pong balls, the Ewok uses flattening arms which are triggered by pneumatic actuators connected to a pneumatic tank. The Wampa uses an inflatable tube inflated by the pneumatic tank to launch the golf ball, and two ramps each with a battering ram triggered by pneumatic actuators to remove the Kong toys. Because of starting zone restrictions, the Wampa aims to collect only half of the ping pong balls using a net attached to one of the battering rams. This net is triggered to drop by the impact between the battering ram and the Kong toy. Finally, the Jawa employs a scissor arm system to remove the Kong toys. To extend the scissor arms, a solenoid triggers weight 1 to drop. Each scissor arm is outfitted with a collection head with extension arms, which are triggered to extend by a string which pulls taut as the scissor arms begin to retract. To retract the scissor arms, a second solenoid triggers weight 2 to drop. 
Additionally, the Jawa has a telescoping pole which launches the golf ball with strings which are attached to a DC motor. The projected score for each design is tabulated in the predicted score matrix. The specific mechanisms which the R2-D2 employs earn a performance score of 4 for each task which it attempts. Upon successful execution, the R2-D2 will earn 94 points. This is clearly greater than any of the alternatives, which is due to their relatively poor performance in all categories except retrieving ping pong balls. Each design's performance in accomplishing the criteria from the House of Quality was weighted against the criteria's importance rating in the concept evaluation matrix. The criteria which received a 10 out of 10 are mandatory, as they are required to qualify for the competition. As such, every design received a 2 or satisfactory rating on these criteria. The R2-D2 received a relative total of 0.32. This was trailed most closely by the Ewok and Jawa, each with 0.24. The final constructed machine is shown here alongside the CAD designs. Last minute modifications include the following. Weights were added to the hinged flattening arms to shorten the time which these arms require to reach the pong toys, and a brace was added to fix the rotation of the inclined tube at the proper angle and distance to the rotating centerpiece. Additionally, the total cost of the RTD2 was $87.47. This is within the $100 limit set by the competition rules. In the qualifying competition, the prototype for the RTD2 performed poorly and was seeded 57 out of 60 for the competition. This ended up being beneficial, however, as the prototype was then heavily modified before settling on the final design and machine. This final machine then went on to win every round in which it competed and placed first out of 60 in the competition. The judging review prior to the competition ended with the R2-D2 ranked 14 out of 60 and the People's Choice Poll with a rank of 9 out of 60. Each of these rankings are drastically improved from the seeding rank, which can be attributed to the prototype modifications which were completed during the final week of the competition. The hinged flattening arms were successful in removing the Kong toys 64.3% of the time. In round 3, these arms were unsuccessful at removing both Kong toys. The pneumatic tank was pumped at too high a pressure, and when the pneumatic actuators activated, the hinged flattening arms were triggered such that one arm landed on top of the Kong, preventing its movement either in or out of the zone, and the other reached the Kong toy after the adjacent machine's mechanism. This latter fault was the reason for failure in all other cases when the arms were unsuccessful at removing the Kong toy. Despite no dedicated mechanism to retrieve ping pong balls, the RTD2 ended with an average score of positive 13 points for ping pong balls and had at least one in the zone at the close of each round. As there were a total of 8 possible, this reliability percentage is 23.2%. However, as there was no mechanism attempting to retrieve these ping pong balls, these points were essentially bonus on top of the projected score. The R2-D2 was successful in launching the golf ball to the highest altitude relative to opponents in each round, resulting with a reliability percentage of 100%. Finally, the R2-D2 successfully placed 4 colored balls in the rotating centerpiece 63.5% of the time, but successfully egressed 100% of the time. With those reliability percentages, the R2-D2 scored an average of positive 34.3 points for this task. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! This is the live footage of the final round of the competition. The R2-D2 is competing against the teams ranked 1st, 15th, and 25th. The total time necessary to set up and box the R2-D2 was under 1.5 minutes. This was well within the required 2 minute, 45 seconds requirement and relieved stress prior to the start of each round. The final score for this round was 115 points. The R2-D2 raised the golf ball the highest, earning positive 40 points, placed 4 colored balls in the rotating centerpiece and successfully egressed from the restricted area, earning positive 54 points. It removed both Kong toys and acquired 3 ping pong balls, adding positive 21 points. The next closest score by competitors in this round was 36 points, clearly identifying the R2-D2 as the winner. Additionally, this score of 115 points was the highest obtained by any team throughout all rounds of the competition. In rounds 4 through 7, the R2-D2 score was the maximum or was equal to the maximum score obtained in each round. These rounds are highlighted in yellow. When we began constructing the final design, we laid out the mechatronics along with the machine components as we were building so we knew where each item would be in the final composition. This made boxing relatively easy. Our design was relatively simple and each subsystem was unrelated. This prevented the failure of one system from negatively affecting others. Future design recommendations include improving reliability of mechanisms through more testing and modification, making the wiring for mechatronics more secure, adding a brace for the golf ball tape to improve the tape stability, and leveling the actuators which triggered the hinged flattening arms to shorten the time required to reach the contours. Any questions?